In this video, we'll address the question of whether line integrals are affected by the parameterization of the curve. We'll prove that in general, the answer is no, except in some cases, one parameterization will give you a positive value and another parameterization will give you a negative value for the line integral. Recall that a parameterized curve can be thought of as a vector valued function that takes some interval of real numbers from A to B into either R2 or R3. If we're working in R2, we can think of R of t as having components R1 of t and R2 of t. We'll work only with smooth parameterizations. By that I mean that R prime of t is continuous and R prime of t is never zero. A nice fact about smooth parameterizations that I won't prove is that they're invertible. And this implies that if we have another parameterization, Q, taking another interval, say CD to R2, then we can rewrite R of t as Q of phi of t, where phi is some function that takes the interval AB to the interval CD. We can think of phi as matching up points in the interval AB and points in the interval CD that hit the exact same point in the image curve. This is called a reparameterization of the curve. We will be working with smooth reparameterizations, that is, phi prime of t is continuous and is never equal to zero. I want to make an important distinction between two types of reparameterizations. We could have a parameterization of a curve and a reparameterization that both go in the same direction. They both start at the same initial point, which I could call R of A or Q of C, and they both end in the same point, which I could call R of B or Q of D. On the other hand, we could have instead two parameterizations that go in opposite directions. So in this case, R starts down here, so this point is R of A, and R ends here at R of B, but Q starts up here, so this is also Q of C, and the point down here is Q of D. In the same direction situation, we have that phi of A is C, and phi of B is D, this follows from the picture where R of A is Q of C and the reparameterization formula. Therefore, if I draw a picture of Q, here's the interval AB, remember that A is less than B, and here's the interval CD, remembering that C is less than D. Since phi of A is C and phi of B is D, my function phi must connect this point to this point, so it must be an increasing function phi of t must be bigger than zero for all t if we recall that uh, phi of t can't be equal to zero. In the other case where the parameterizations are in opposite directions, we have from the picture that r of a equals q of d. And so looking at this formula here, r of a is q of d, so phi of a must be d. And similarly, phi of b is c. And now if I draw the picture, Phi of A is D, so this point is on the graph of phi, and phi of B is C, so that point is on the graph. And since phi prime can't be zero, phi must be decreasing, and phi prime must be negative for all t. We'll see that this key idea about parameterizations that go in the same direction versus parameterizations that go in opposite directions is what determines whether line integrals are affected by the parameterization of the curve in terms of their positive and negative sign. First, let's tackle line integrals with respect to arc length. Suppose that r of t is one parameterization of the curve C, and q of w is another parameterization. Then the line integral with respect to arc length will have the same value using either parameterization, assuming we always compute integrals from the smaller value of the parameter to the larger. So we always do things like integrate from 1 to 2 instead of from 2 to 1. If we integrate from 2 to 1, of course, we'll get the negative of what we would if we'd integrated from 1 to 2. To prove that parameterization doesn't matter, 
we'll use the reparameterization formula. So we know that r of t is equal to q of phi of t for our reparameterization function phi. Let me write out the definition of the line integral with respect to arc length using the parameterization r. So by definition, that's the integral from t equals a to t equals b of f of r of t times the norm of r prime of t dt. Using the reparameterization formula, that's the same thing as the integral from a to b of f of q of phi of t times the norm of q composed with phi prime of t dt. I think it's easier to understand what this expression means if I write everything in terms of components, even though it's a little bit messier. So I'm going to write r of t in terms of components r1 of t, r2 of t, and I'll write q of w in terms of q1 of w, q2 of w. I'm assuming here that we're working in r2 to keep things simpler. Now q composed with phi of t is going to be q1 of phi of t, q2 of phi of t. And so if I take the derivative q composed with phi prime of t, that's just the derivative of each component. I can expand this out using the ordinary chain rule of calculus 1 to be q1 prime of phi of t times q times phi prime of t and q2 prime of phi of t times phi prime of t. The reason I took the derivative is because I'm trying to get an expression for this normed component in terms of coordinates. So let me take now the norm of this expression, which I get by taking the square root of the squares of each component. Now each of these terms is going to have a phi prime squared in it. So I can factor out the phi prime squared and take the square root of it. The square root of a squared is given by the absolute value of phi prime of t, and I'll carry over the rest of the expression. So now I have an, a way of writing this normed expression in my line integral in terms of components, and I'll just plug this formula into my line integral. Remember, we're trying to show that the line integral with respect to arc length doesn't depend on parameterization. So I need to make this expression here make look like the expression I'd get with, with using the parameterization q. And to do that, I'm going to perform a simple u substitution and set u equal to phi of t. So we have u equals phi of t, and du is phi prime of t dt. Now if phi prime of t is greater than zero, then the absolute value of phi prime of t is just the same as phi prime of t. And so a u substitution is very easy, and I can rewrite my line integral as the integral from u equals phi of a to u equals phi of b of f of q of u times the square root of q1 prime of u squared plus q2 prime of u squared times du. Now recall that phi prime of t being greater than zero corresponds to the case when phi of a is equal to c and phi of b is equal to d. Both parameterizations are going in the same direction. So my integral is the integral going in the direction from u equals c to u equals d, which is the usual way to do an integral because c is less than d. And so this line integral is, by definition, the line integral of f with respect to arc length using the parameterization q. So we've proved that the line integral doesn't depend on parameterization, at least in the case that phi prime of t is zero, in the case that the parameterizations go in the same direction. But we still need to consider the case when the parameterizations go in opposite directions. So we need to consider if phi prime of t is less than zero. In this case, the absolute value of phi prime of t is equal to the negative of phi prime of t. And this is the case also in which 
phi of A is equal to D and phi of B is equal to C because our parameterizations are going in opposite directions. So when I do the U substitution, I get almost the same thing as before, but I get a negative sign in front of my DU because of replacing the absolute value with the, the negative when I get rid of the absolute value signs. And instead of the order from C to D, I'm gonna be integrating from D to C. So let me write that down. But notice that I'm integrating now from D to C where D is bigger than C. So let me rewrite this in the usual direction of integration. So we go from a smaller number C to a bigger number D. Of course, that introduces an additional negative sign, which cancels with this negative sign and makes my integral positive again. So once again, even when the case when where parameterizations are in opposite directions, we still are left with an expression that's exactly equal to the integral of f ds using the parameterization q. So the parameterization does not affect the value of the line integral with respect to arc length, even if we go in opposite directions. Now, of course, if we were to write down our integral and, and decide to be contrary and, and integrate with going from like 2 to 1 instead of 1 to 2, then, of course, our integral would be the negative of what we got. But as long as we're integrating from a smaller bound to a larger bound, our integrals with respect to arc length will always come out the same no matter what the parameterization. Next, let's look into line integrals with respect to x or y. The situation is very similar in this case, except now if our two parameterizations go in opposite directions, then our line integrals will be the negatives of each other. In other words, if r of t is one parameterization of the curve c and q of w is another parameterization of c, then the line integral with respect to x will have the same value using either parameterization as long as both parameterizations traverse the curve in the same direction. And otherwise, if they traverse the curve in opposite directions, we'll write that the integral going one way of f dx is the negative of the integral going the other way, where negative c means the parameterization goes in the opposite direction. To prove this theorem, we'll again start out using the reparameterization formula. So we know that r of t is q of phi of t for our reparameterization function phi. We'll also write out what it means to be the line integral of f with respect to x using the parameterization r. That means we integrate from t equals a to t equals b, f of r of t times r1 prime of t dt, where r is broken up into components as r1 of t, r2 of t, and q also is broken up into components as q1 of w, q2 of w. Now let's use the reparameterization formula to re-express this integral in terms of q and phi. So we have the integral from a to b of f of q of phi of t times q1 composed with phi prime of t dt. We can use the ordinary chain rule of calculus 1 to expand this out as q1 prime of phi of t times phi prime of t dt. Now this integral is practically begging for u substitution using u equal to phi of t and du equal to phi prime of t dt. When I make those substitutions, I get the integral from u equals phi of a to u equals phi of b, f of q of u times q1 prime of u du. Again, let's consider two cases. In the first case, we have phi prime of t is bigger than zero. That corresponds to phi being increasing and phi of a equals c and phi of b equals d. So we can rewrite our integral as u equals c to u equals d of f of q of u 
q1 prime of u du, which is exactly what's meant by the line integral of f with respect to x using the parameterization q. Note that c is less than d, so we're integrating in the normal, ordinary order. Suppose, on the other hand, that phi prime of t is less than zero. We now have a situation where our two parameterizations are going in opposite directions. In this case, we've seen that phi of a is d and phi of b is c. So when I rewrite my integral, I have the integral from d to c of f of q of u, q1 prime of u du. Now we're integrating in the wrong order. And in order to return this to a, a more normal expression, we have to switch the order of integration, which introduces a negative sign. So now we have an expression that's same as the line integral over c of f dx with respect to q, except it's actually the negative of that line integral. So using a parameterization that reverses the direction of traversing c gives us a negative sign here. And the two integrals aren't exactly the same. They're the negatives of each other. This completes the proof for the line integrals with respect to x, and the line integrals with respect to y are similar. Finally, let's look at line integrals of vector fields. Here, the situation is similar to line integrals with respect to x and y. If we have two parameterizations, r and q, then the line integral of the vector field dr is the same as the line integral of the vector field dq, as long as r and q traverse the curve in the same direction. Otherwise, we have that the line integral of f dr is going to be the negative of the line integral f dq. And I'll note the, signify the fact that the q is going in the opposite direction, again, with the, the negative c. You'll be relieved to see that the proof of this is very easy. If we write f in terms of components, so it's p i plus q j, then the line integral f dr is really just going to be the integral of p dx plus q dy, where dx and dy, of course, are expressed in terms of r1 prime of t dt and r2 prime of t dt. They're expressed in terms of r. We've seen that that's the same thing exactly as the line integral of p dx plus q dy if we use q as long as r and q are in the same direction. So therefore, it's the same thing as the line integral of f dr dq just by writing things in terms of co components. And for the same reason, we know that f dr is going to be the negative of f dq if the curves are going, the parameterizations are going in opposite directions, just because of that exact same fact for line integrals with respect to x and with respect to y. That completes these proofs that line integrals don't depend on parameterization, except for parameterizations that go in opposite directions that introduces a negative sign. In this video, we saw that the integral with respect to arc length does not depend on the parameterization. The integral of a function with respect to x or with respect to y and the integral of a vector field don't depend on parameterization either, except that if you parameterize in the opposite direction, you get the negative of the original integral. I proved these results only for curves in R2, but the exact same proofs work for curves in R3 or any Rn. These facts about reparameterization will come in handy when we study Green's theorem and other theorems concerning line integrals.